To create a new project, click on the paper icon. Enter the name of your project and select a title for your game. Now choose a location for your project to be stored. You can create a folder on your desktop called Projects. Wait for the assets to copy to your project. Welcome to the MV Editor. By clicking on the folder icon, we can open our existing MV projects. Here is the Save Data icon. Clicking this will save the current work you have done. The scissors icon will delete and also copy the selected element, while the double paper icon will only copy. Finally, the clipboard icon will paste the element you copied. Clicking the back arrow will undo the previous edit. Clicking on the road icon will allow us to edit our tile map. Here is our tile map palette. We can select a tile to paint onto our map. The pencil icon will allow us to place a single tile on our map while the square icon will allow us to drag the tile into a square shape. Next, the circle icon can be used to drag the tile into a circle. Using the paintbrush icon, we can paint the tile over the whole area of another repeating tile. Here, I am selecting a building on the B page of my tile palette. Using the pencil tool, I'll add four houses. Now I can use the black pen icon to add shadows to my buildings. Clicking on the red pawn icon will change to the event editor. Events are the building blocks of the game. Double click the map to add an event. Here we have a pop-up window with different tabs to help you customize your event. Conditions, image, movement, options, priority, trigger, and finally contents. You can set a name for your event and write a note to help you remember what your event does. New event page adds a new page. Copy event page will copy the page selected. Paste event page will create a duplicate. Delete event page removes the selected page. Finally, clear event page will reset the selected page. Let's create a gold chest event. We can select the closed chest image by clicking on the image box. Here we are turning off walking because our event does not move. The priority and trigger will remain the default option. Here we can select show text, so a message is displayed. In the box I will type plus 10 gold. You can also add a face, choose the message box background and position. Next we will actually give the player 10 gold by clicking on change gold under party. We can increase or decrease by either a value that won't change or by a variable. We don't want this event to repeat, so we will add a control self switch under game progression. Turn it on and now create a new event page. Now we must set our condition for this page to be activated. Find the open chest image, then also turn off walking. Now we can select show text under message and say the chest is empty. We don't need to create a new page, we want this message to repeat. Click OK. Now we can play test our game for the first time. Click the green play button at the top right. Click save changes. The game window will pop up. When the title loads, click new game. Clicking on our chest will make us walk over and open it. It shows us plus 10 gold. Click again to close the message. No matter how many times we click the chest now, it will only say that it is empty because we locked the event to page two after we set control self switch A to on. Let's click on the gear icon and take a look at the game database. Actors are the players in your game. Here you can set their name, class, level, sprites, equipment, and traits. Classes are what your character's role or type will be. Here you can create various classes by giving them a name, setting the experience points curve, and the parameters curve, setting the skills and spells that can be learned, and finally setting the traits. Skills is where you will create new skills and spells that will cost MP or TP. Here you can create spells and set a variety of settings, like requiring a weapon or setting the damage. On the items tab, we can create an item for our game. We can give it a name, set the icon, the skill type, the MP or TP game. We can also set the damage, the effects, and more. The weapons tab will allow us to create various weapons. 
set the name, the icon, the weapon type, animation, and also the weapon's shop price. The Armors tab is very similar to the Weapons tab. Here you can create your wearable armor, choose its defense, and adjust its settings to your liking. Next we have the Enemies tab. This is where you create your enemies with your preferred settings for your game to be fought in battles. The Troops tab. Using this we can use our enemies to make troops. This is how the enemy will appear. Set the background, music, events, and the amount of enemies in your troop. The States tab will let you create states for your game like Confused, Poisoned, and Sleep. Tune the settings to your liking and choose what messages appear. Next, the Animations tab will allow you to combine existing and new animations to make a single animation. Pick the images, frame amount, and position. Then you can now use your new animation in the game. The Tile Sets tab is where you will add, remove, and edit different tile sets. Change which tiles you can walk through and also which ones you can walk behind. Next, we have the Common Events tab. Here you can set up events that will be commonly used throughout your game. Name them and select a trigger and create a switch to turn them on and off. In the Systems tab, we can edit some core aspects of our game, like the title, main menu music, the starting characters in your party, cursor sounds, title screen image, and more. Next, the Types tab. Here we can set the different types in our game. They are as follows. Element, skill, weapon, armor, and equipment types. The final tab in the database is the Terms tab. Here you can change the terms used for stats, parameters, commands, and messages. For example, you can set the level text to LVL instead of the word level. That wraps up the database for now. Let's move on. The puzzle piece icon opens the plugin manager. Plugins are things you can download off of the internet to change features in your game that would require coding to create. Other people make and share plugins for you to use. Some are free and others are paid. For example, the Community Basic plugin allows you to change the screen size. Clicking the Name section will open a drop-down menu of the plugins you have added to your game. Here we have a few like Custom Logo and Enemy Book. Select the one you want to activate and change the status to On. Clicking an empty space on the main plugin manager screen will add an empty plugin slot for you to customize. Then just select the plugin name and switch the status drop-down to on and adjust the parameters of the plugin to your game's needs. As an example, I will select Alt Menu Screen and activate this plugin in our game. Click OK. Then I will click Apply and Play Test. When the game loads up and I press the Escape key, you will see that the in-game menu screen has had its layout switched. Now I will go back into my plugin manager and turn the Alt Menu Screen plugin off. Click OK and apply, and see how this plugin impacted the look of our game. As you can see, the default menu layout is back. Plugins can help an MV game stand out, so don't be afraid to use them. Clicking on the audio icon will bring up the sound test window. Here you can test the different audio in your game, like background music and sound effects. Play around with the volume, pitch, and pan until it sounds the way you like it. This won't change the audio settings of the sound now, but it will give you an idea of how to set your settings when playing that specific sound in your game. Clicking on the magnifying glass icon, we open the Event Searcher tab. You can search your project for events with switched and variables, or we can search by event name. Let's search for our chest event. Now when it loads you can see our chest was found on map 001. The event is number 001, the name is chest, and the position is 37. This can be handy when your project gets so large you forget where certain events are located. Clicking on the yellow folder icon will bring up the resource manager window. Here you can manage all of the images, background music, and sound effect assets you are using in your game. You can click preview to see what the images look like. When importing new assets, click on the folder the asset will go in, for example an enemy would import into the enemy's folder. Then just select the asset from your PC folder and it will show up for you to use in the editor. DLC will also be added to the editor using this process. Let's move on. By clicking the character icon at the top, we can open the character generator. Here we can create our player or NPC for our game. We can edit the variation here, giving our character different faces. 
You can select more customized options on the left, like the face, the hair, ears, eyes, facial marks, wings, and more. Here we are selecting a front hair for our character. Let's give it a different color. Now we will select the rear hair and also change a few more settings. We can also just click randomize. This will give us a completely random character every time. We can also change from male to female and click randomize. Then lastly, we can switch from female to kid and click randomize. Once we have our character looking the way we want them to, we can export the images to our PC and then add them to our resource manager. We can export the face, walk, damage, and the battler. We can also import other characters in the character generator to edit. Then finally, we save our settings to our PC. Now we can close the window. Now we can look at creating new maps. Right click on our map in the bottom left, then click new. First I'll name our map. Then we choose the tile set we want to use for this map. We can change the map size, scroll type, enemy encounter steps, background audio, and whether or not to disable dashing. We can also add a parallax background, which is an image for the sky or background that will scroll left, right, up or down. Then lastly, we have our encounters. This is where we add the troops we have created from our enemies to be encounters on this map. Change the weight to determine how often that specific troop appears, and then specify whether you want the encounter to be on the entire map or a specific region. Once you have done all of this, we can click OK and create our new map. Now that our map is created, I will quickly paint some tiles on it using the tools we have learned. It is very easy to create whatever you can imagine. Lastly, if you right-click while in the event editor mode, a drop-down for quick creation events will show up. We can set the starting place of the character for the game, set a map transfer to another map easily, create a door, a quick treasure chest, and finally an innkeeper. Here I will set a transfer to our desert map we were just on. I will select the map, then select the tile I would like for the player to appear on. Then I will click OK, leave the retain direction setting on, and click OK again. Next I will create a quick treasure chest containing an item. We could also set the chest to have gold, a weapon, or armor. I'll set the item to potion. For the last example, I'll quickly create an innkeeper. You can set the innkeeper image and also their room price for the night. That wraps everything for today up. I hope you learned enough information to start creating your own games in MV. I appreciate everyone's support. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more RPG content.